Hey guys, so for today's video, I'm finally going to be doing a review on the Osmo Pocket from DJI. So let's get right into it because I got a lot of things to say about this little bastard right here. Okay, so right off the bat, let me say this is my second Osmo Pocket from DJI. I'm just gonna get right into the problems and why I had to get a second one. Uh, the first one I had, the, there was focusing, 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 focusing issues left and right. 80% um, of the time, it misfocused. And what I mean by that is like, I, I vlog mostly, so I'm gonna use it facing me most of the time. Uh, I'll face it forward for some B-roll sometimes. But yeah, mainly it's gonna be focused on me. Um, but I have my friends in the shot too. It has face tracking and it will lock onto my face and still 80% of the time it would back focus. So everyone behind me was in focus, I was blurry. And you would see the little green square on my face and it was you know, locked onto me and tracking me but I was the one that was blurry. Doesn't make any sense. So I went on Google of course and I looked it up um, as I do with all the things I buy and I saw a lot of people complaining about the focus issues. So I thought, crap, this device just has that. It's just, it doesn't do good with its focusing. So, you know, I got really upset because it's so small and so tiny and compact. And I did like the files that it put out, you know, it's 4K, the sensor is not as big as, as all the other cameras I have, but it still came out really good and really sharp. So I was really sad that it might not work. So I sent it back in, um, I spoke with DJI, and the person I spoke to on the phone said it, he, he straight up told me it's a known issue that there's focusing problems. So I said, okay, you know, if it's really just a problem with one, send me another one, otherwise, otherwise I would just get my money back. Uh, so he said, no, it's a known issue, it's a thing, they know about it, uh, he sent me another one. I waited and I responded to one of their emails saying, you know, it was coming soon, but I didn't get a tracking number. So I asked for a tracking number and there's a ghost in the studio, by the way. So I asked for a tracking number and on top of that, I said, you know, how do I know the one I'm gonna get isn't defective if you guys know that you have a ton of defective ones out there? Because reading in forums and stuff, I also saw people were getting um, their replacements in different packages. So I thought maybe they had a new batch or something like that. And the person responded from DJI through email saying, it is not a widely known issue. It's just a freak occurrence. Don't worry about it. Okay. Um, so I finally got my second one in and it came in the exact same package as my first one. So I got really nervous, but it actually turned out all right. And I'll get into that after I finish talking about all the complaints I had. Okay, so second complaint with the first one that I had. Not this, not this one, but the first Osmo Pocket I had. So when I would turn it on, this is what happens, okay? I don't know if you guys can see this clearly because it's focused on my face, but this is what happens. That's it. It goes through its motions, it focuses forward, that's how it's supposed to go. You turn it off, it does this, right? So the first one, it started doing a thing where when I turned it on, this head would turn once and get stuck. And I would get an error on the screen and it would say gimbal locked. And you could easily fix it with your fingers just twisting it and it would just continue to go. But that was a brand new device. It shouldn't be doing that. So that had me worried because, you know, it is small, the motor, I don't know how, how good it is on this thing, but that worried me. So that was complaint number two. Okay, so for my third complaint, um, I'm not gonna be able to show you guys because the screen's so small here, but basically it's a touch screen and you can change almost all of the settings on it without having to connect it to a phone or anything like that. So that's great, that's what I want it for. One of the things that you can change on there is the volume level, right? But um, there was actually an update released, I think like two days ago, but before that, when you go to the volume, um, there were just bars and it said auto, low, moderate, high. That was it. If you left it on auto, when you turn off the gimbal and turn it back on, it would stay on auto. If you changed it to anything else, like high, which is what I think everyone should just leave it on because the mic volume is kind of low on it because it's literally, again, I don't think I can show you, but there's a little hole like right here and there's a little hole on the bottom. That's it, that's all it's picking up sound from. So when you put it on high, it's actually pretty good. It's okay, it's pretty usable. But if you leave it on high, when you turn it off and you're walking about and you turn it back on, it actually defaulted back to moderate. 
I don't know why. So if you left it on auto, it would stay on auto, but it would choose the low volume and then it would choose the high volume and your videos, you would have to edit them because they don't match. I wanted it on high, I couldn't do it. That was a negative for me. Okay, next complaint. I'm gonna see if I can show you guys. So when you turn it on, you'll see the DJI symbol flash on like that and then it comes onto the screen. That's it. The DJI symbol pops onto the screen. Uh, you see a little flare and then that's it. Real quick, maybe a second, two seconds at the most, okay? It would do a thing where the, that symbol would flash and then reflash maybe two times, three times sometimes, and it would wipe out all your settings. I don't know what that is. Uh, from my researching online, people are saying that it's with some SD cards, but I don't know if that's the case because they were listing SD cards that they said were safe and should be good. They've never had a problem with it, and I'm using those SD cards, and I still got them. So, yeah. It would wipe out the settings, which isn't too bad. It's an annoyance, and it's something they could probably fix, and, uh, fix with a firmware update. You would just have to go in and change your things back because it would default everything back to like 1080 at 30 frames. Um, the sound would be set to auto, and I would just go in there and change it back to 4K. I usually leave it at 30 frames, and then you know change the volume to high, and I have to redo that over and over and whatever. My biggest gripe with that though is that it'll save video files in two formats, um, MOV or MP4. I save it all in MP4. When it wipes out, it changes it back to MOV, even though that's not the default choice. And there is no way to change that manually through the touchscreen. You have to connect it to your phone. And it's, it's a really dumb bug because when you connect it to your phone, if you were on MP4 before, it'll actually show that you're still on MP4. Like you don't even have to change it. You just have to plug it into your phone and then unplug it and it'll be back to MP4. I don't know what that is. It seems like an easy fix. I don't even know if they know about it. So hopefully I can get it to someone to look at because it's really dumb. All right, let's see, next negative. It's not too bad and it's not gonna affect everyone, but so basically you take the little adapter thingy, flip it around and you have a little connector, right? Sticking out, plug it into your phone. If you want to use your phone or change settings from the phone, whatever you want to do. For me, it's a problem because I have an Android phone. I have the Note 8. And with this case, and it's not like a special case, it's just a spigot. It's not that thick, it's actually pretty thin and stuff. But this little tiny connector plugs in, but it just doesn't reach. It doesn't connect all the way. So you have to remove the case just to connect the phone. And I hate having to do that. I don't know how many other people have to do that. I don't know what kind of cases you have, but for me, it's more than an annoyance. Um, I really don't like it, but I don't have to do it that often because I don't really ever want to connect it to my phone in the first place. I only connect it to the phone if I get that weird bug where everything wipes out and I have to change it back from MOV to MP4. That's the only time I really connect it. So just something to think. All right, and this is more, the next complaint is going to be more on the app. You get the DJI Mimo app. Let's just load it up here. See if you guys can see it. All right, so it's glary, whatever. It's in English, okay? But when you click on DJI support, if for some reason you needed it, right? At least on mine, come on, focus. You can't see it, but everything here, it's all in Chinese. I don't know Chinese, I'm sorry. So I couldn't figure out a way to change it. I don't really need it, but you know, why? So again, I went to their forums, looked to see for some answers. And apparently in iOS, they have language selection. In Android, uh, it's kind of whatever language it just pops up with as default. And I happen to get Chinese. So there's no way for me to change that to English until they fix it. Okay, now that all the negatives are out of the way, I think. I think I remember everything. I hope I did. Uh, like I said, this is my second one, and I was very skeptical, because I pretty much thought I would get it back, and it's gonna start doing the same things immediately. Uh, I am happy to say that it has actually had no focusing issues whatsoever. Um, the first one, I tried different things. So it has two modes. You can do AFC or AFS, you know, continuous or single focus modes. Um, 
In continuous, you're supposed to get some kind of like focus pumping action. I didn't really have that problem, but it just wouldn't focus on me. Like I said, um, even in selfie mode, it wouldn't focus on me. So people were saying, oh, you're doing it wrong. You got to put it in uh, AFS mode. It's okay, so I did. Same thing. There was no difference. Um, yeah, it just sucked. But now on the second one that I've got, I literally just leave it in autofocus continuous mode and no problems. Even in selfie mode, it knows to focus on me, um, whoever's closest to the camera, if it's facing me and there's people behind me, keeps us pretty much all in focus. Um, it surprised me. I genuinely thought all of them were gonna be bad because I've seen a lot of complaints about the focusing issues, but mine is good. So, knock on wood? I, I don't have wood to knock on, but early in the video I said there was an update released like two days ago so they've been doing updates pretty regularly um, and they've been okay uh, this next one that came out said it has resolved some focus pumping issues I don't really notice it because you know I didn't see it in the first place I'm hoping that you know my focus stays good on this thing but one thing they didn't put um, in the updates in the notes at least that I noticed is they changed some of the icons and one of those icons is that mic volume. And now it's just a shape, like a little drawing of a microphone, and you can just see the bars going up and down on it for the levels. But the good thing is now you can set it to high, and it actually remembers it. So when you turn it off and turn it back on, the mic is set to high. It's a small change, but it's a really good change. It's a really good quality of life change for this camera. It makes a huge difference, really big. I like it a lot. So yeah, that's pretty much my review of this little bastard right here. It's good. Do I think it's worth it? Um, you know, it's about 350 bucks. I think that if you are trying to vlog or capture some B-roll for some footage, uh, yeah, I think it's totally worth it. If you're gonna go on vacation with your family or friends and just, you just wanna have fun and record some stuff along the way, totally worth it. As far as vlogging, um, as long as it stays working, because I'm, I'm still a little skeptical because that first one really messed me up. But as long as it stays working the way it is now and keeps focus and everything and the mic volume stays, it's pretty much perfect for me at least. Um, perfect for vlogging. I mean, I'm like a lot of people out there. I'm new to this. I'm not good at it. I don't actually like being in front of the camera. Um, I'm just an introvert by nature. I'm shy. I don't like it. So the idea of holding a much bigger camera with a screen like I'm using right now uh, flipped out with a microphone on top and then a big old stand and I'm holding out like this in front of everybody it makes me uneasy I don't want to do it I don't want to go out and vlog like that it just draws too much attention for me um, this guy you know honestly he still draws some attention but it's it's just different he's so tiny most people just kind of ignore it. and even when I was at Disney Anyone that was staring at me and my group with this thing out, they were just looking at this to see what the heck it was because a lot, not a lot of people know what this is. And when they see it, it just, I don't know, it just looks like a little thing of mace or pepper spray or something like, you know, just a little tiny black stick. They don't understand what they're looking at. Um, and the few people that did, they just thought it was really cool, you know. So yeah, I mean, if you're anything like me and you're, you're new to vlogging or you want to try vlogging, you want to get in front of the camera and you're a bit uncomfortable with it or really uncomfortable with it um, I totally suggest getting one of these cameras and trying it out I think you'll be pleasantly surprised I think you will be able to film more you'll go out and do more stuff with it it's just super easy to carry around fits in pretty much any pocket and honestly like I said Disneyland um, that's a crowded ass park and we were there pretty much all day I literally held this in my hand the entire day you know walked around with it I didn't even put it back in my pocket it's super lightweight, so it's really not gonna like get heavy over time. You can just hold it, and when you're ready, turn it back on and start filming. It's great for that, so yeah. I will put a link in the description box if you wanna check one out and get it. But yeah, it's a fun little device. Uh, I think you should get it if you want to vlog, or again, just have fun on family vacations and stuff. So yeah, I guess I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.